So, the C14, taking it from storage in the garage, through the backyard, into and up onto the back patio, getting it set up, getting it pointed roughly towards Polaris, getting a good polar alignment, running an, an autofocus routine, connecting it all through Nina and guiding through PhD2 and all the way through to first lights, processing and getting a final image. This is a series that we're going to start with today and we're going to learn about it and see how all of this is going to be an effective process in seeing if this rig, this enormous C14 rig is something that can be done from a portable standpoint. And that's what we're going to learn about here on another episode of Astro Playground. Stick around. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it's getting um, late here. Uh, it is Saturday, uh, <clears throat> the 22nd um, of March, and we are, it's looking, it's looking like it's gonna be a relatively nice night, but we're going to try to pull the scope out and around and get it into the backyard. Um, that should prove to be interesting. Um, as you can see, Rocky is ready to supervise, aren't you? Yes, he is ready to supervise. Um, so we're gonna give this a shot. Um, I have not taken this scope out into uh, the backyard um, uh, yet. So this is the first time we're ever going to take it around the back of the house. I'm hoping that the, the wheelie bar will perform well. Um, and we're gonna find out right now. So here we go. And there we go. As you can probably hear, I'm breathing a little hard. It's not terribly difficult, <clears throat> but that's a very good place for it. So, Excellent. Now, seeing as this is the first time that we are setting this up and pointing it towards Polaris, we're probably going to, I am just trying to get them out in the rough position, Polaris sits just about right there. So we should be in pretty good shape. Now we're still kind of early, so we're going to go ahead and hold off on doing anything else and come back out when we get closer to uh, seeing a, a star. So probably just after the blue hour, uh, just prior to astronomical dark, so astronomical dusk. So we should be in good shape. On to our next step. Okay, so we are uh, going to attempt a couple of things today. 
uh, and this evening. Um, the first thing that's very important uh, to always remember is to level your scope. Um, that's uh, in one of my previous videos, uh, my last video, I, I mentioned this. I think I mentioned it in a couple of other videos as well. Um, these little bubble levels are the cat's whiskers. So you just uh, pick up a couple of these on Amazon. They're, they're not expensive. Um, and they will allow you to level the scope in both axes. All right. So that's basically what we've done. If you look down here, um, you'll see that the scope is off its wheels. Okay. It's sitting on the, on its pins on my anti-vibration uh, pads. All right. Each pin has its own anti-vibration pad and we have leveled uh, the plate uh, and the, the, the mount and plate, we've leveled the tripod so we have a good frame of reference to start from. All right, as you can see here, it's everything is nice and level. Okay, the, um, the next thing to do uh, from here is to make sure, uh, and, and before you put it down on its pins, you want to make sure that you're pointed at least roughly towards Polaris. Um, which we are, uh, and from here we will uh, go ahead and utilizing our William Optics Guide Star 61. Um, this will uh, is what we will use with Sharp Cap. You can also use Nina. Nina's um, a polar th a three point polar alignment uh, option is excellent. Um, I'm using Sharp Cap because I'm still in the process of learning Nina, and I'm familiar with Sharp Cap. It does a pretty good job. Um, so we will we will do that. We're going to go ahead and get the scope um, polar aligned. Um, it's roughly polar aligned now, uh, and we'll get into that and uh, show you that process here uh, in just a few minutes. On to our next step. One of the things that I wanted to uh, showcase with this particular telescope mount, um, the RST three, um, 300 has uh, an interesting way of both parking and homing itself. And I think it's worth uh, just showing it just a little bit here, um, and uh, just to give you an idea. Okay, so the scope is right now, this is in what is known as the polar uh, park or the polar alignment park. Um, the home position on this is <laughs> very interesting. So on the Hubo Eye, um, the handset, what you're going to want to do uh, from your main screen, which is right here, you want to go down to the zero button, which is the ILL, and hold it in until the scope moves. And this will move it to a specific home position that, um, as far as I can tell, you cannot change. And I don't think they want you to change it. So. If I'm wrong about that, I'm sure that somebody in the, uh, in the chat, somebody watching, uh, will correct me on that. So here we go. We're just going to hold that down. And it's going to go for the RA, uh, the right ascension and declination limits. Um, and I will, from here, go ahead and speed up the video uh, just so that you're not sitting here watching this slew. goes to its limits and then makes its way back to the home position. And this, I don't know if there's another telescope mount out there that uses or utilizes this particular home position. Um, but the Rainbow Astro, the RST300, and the 135, 135Es, uh, the 150s, they all have this particular home position. So it's uh, weights down westward, Waste, weights down pointing to the west. Um, that is your home position. So from here, if you're you know, so inclined, you can put it back into the polar park. Pick up my handset here. And if you simply on the handset, and as you can see, it says that the um, right ascension limit was found, the declination limit was found, and it moved to the offsets, which I don't believe we have any offsets um, set yet. 
Uh, I don't know if we actually need to. And the home was successful. So there it is. Um, so if you want to now move to the Polar Park, you come up here to the eight. Uh, actually, let me back out of this. Okay, back to the main screen. I'm trying to keep this so you can see it and not fighting the sun behind me. So you hit the eight uh, and go to park. So enter. Go to Polar Access. Polar Access, right there, enter. And then Polar Access Parking, yes. And it will go ahead and move to our Polar Access. Okay, so there it is. Just a little caveat. I uh, thought it would be useful information, especially for those of you that have any of the rainbow mounts. So, on to our next step. There you go. Go around, around, Rocky. Go around, around, Rocky. Come on. Yeah. So, there you have it. We are through our first episode uh, of the initial setup bringing the scope out from storage and into the backyard, setting it up on the back patio and getting it balanced um, and level, ready for polar aligning. That's gonna be the subject of our next video, um, as well as the autofocus routine for running the scope effectively uh, so that we get sharp stars. Can't really do anything without sharp stars. So polar aligning, absolutely essential for guiding, for uh, slewing to targets and plate solving. The um, autofocus routine, essential for getting those nice, clean, crisp, sharp stars. So if you like this kind of content and you wanna see more, I encourage you to go ahead and hit that, uh, that subscribe button, which is right here. Give us, that, give us that like that you see right here and hit that notification bell that you see right here, all right? Uh, that will ensure that the kind of content that, uh, that, we, um, that we put up on a regular basis, that you'll see it first, that it'll show up in your notifications and you'll be uh, privy to our latest, uh, our latest videos. Uh, I would also encourage you to go and check out Astroworld TV. Um, our, our buddies at uh, Astroworld, who, which I am an, uh, an admin member, um, uh, I would encourage you to come and check us out on our regular broadcast on Wednesdays and on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We sit there and talk all things astrophotography. We talk setups, we talk equipment, uh, latest news uh, from, from the world of astrophotography, and we get into other topics as well. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, um, personal experiences, we talk about sports, we talk about all kinds of things. Uh, so come and join us, and, uh, and if you do come over to Astro World TV, um, jump into the chat and, and let everybody know that you got there uh, by coming and visiting us here. And uh, I would encourage you, in the meantime, uh, to check out Astro World Telescopes. I'm going to put a, an affiliate link for Astro World Telescopes in the description of the video below. Um, and when you are looking to purchase new equipment, uh, you're looking to uh, make a, a, a purchase for your uh, telescopes or, or uh, your cameras or whatever you might need, um, consider going over and to Astro World Telescopes. Click on the link that I'm going to provide for you. It doesn't cost you anything, um, it, but it helps us out. It helps to support our channel. We get a small commission on, on anything that you buy. Um, so head over to Astro World Telescopes and tell Dan that uh, you, you saw us here. Uh, here on Astro Playground um, that we sent you on over so that you would continue uh, to look up and to admire and to appreciate the wonderful splendor that we have that is the result of our creation in this, ga this great galaxy and in this universe. Uh, what a privilege it is that we have to explore um, and to find the, uh, the treasures that are hidden in the skies above. In the spirit of that, I would encourage you to keep imaging, keep educating, and keep looking up. Clear skies until we meet again from all of us here at Astro Playground. Bye for now.